Hey there guys, what's going on? So if you watched my last video, you'll know I talked about going to the uh, the record shop in, uh, in Ithaca, New York, namely Angry Mom Records, one of the uh, great little uh, hole-in-the-wall basement spots, a great place to buy records, a great place that I really love going, and uh, if I can throw my money at any indie record shop that I know of, and there aren't exactly a ton of them around here, but even if there were, I would always go to these guys because they are awesome. And because this is a newer release, it did just come out in the month of June, I wanted to split this particular one off, uh, even though it was part of technically what was in the last video. Uh, but it deserved a video all to itself, and I wanted to get a chance to talk about it in some detail here. Because, of course, we have, as you can see in the title up there, Queens of the Stone Age with their new album, Like Clockwork. Now... I like so I like some of the Queens of the Stone Age stuff in the past. Uh, Suture up your future, threes and sevens. I had sort of dabbled in it. Um, it's harder with like harder rock sounding stuff. Depending on what your definition of that genre is, it's different for uh, you know for different people. Um, but I had heard of them. I really liked uh, Josh's voice, uh, the lead singer of the group. Um, I really liked what he had done in Them Crooked Vultures with Dave Grohl and John Paul Jones. And, uh, you know, when this release was announced, I thought, you know, why not give it a shot? It was interesting. They had uh, signed on to one of my favorite little indie labels, uh, Matador Records, for this particular release. And uh, they had offered a bunch of different ways to buy it. I didn't really take them up on it before it came out, obviously, um, but as I... Uh, when I finally got to pick it up and to listen to it, I found that uh, the elements were really interesting. It is, it, I don't think it's quite as hard and as merciless as some of their other material has been, um, but I think the lyricisms on it are really strong. Um, I think the textures that are there are uh, really dynamic and uh, they're a fun listen. They really will get your, you know, your head bopping and your foot tapping like, your foot tapping so hard you're gonna you're gonna bash through into the basement um and like even the slower stuff kind of where it takes a second to kind of drop into the background like for uh vampire of time and memory uh the vampire of time and memory and uh and Colopsia and like clockwork i like the elements kind of where it fades back and almost gets kind of bluesy and psychedelic and on the softer side, uh, Vampire especially, uh, really, I, I keep listening to that song over and over again. It almost reminds me of like a, kind of a hazy, snarly uh, Beatles, Abbey Road kind of a cut where it starts kind of soft and then has kind of these, uh, you know, craggly guitars kind of going in the background and stuff. That's a song that... Um, I just, I keep really loving and enjoying, and was definitely something I really wanted to throw on the turntable. Um, interesting collaborations abound as well. Um, uh, Sir Elton John is, is appears in there, not where I thought he appeared, actually. Uh, so it was interesting to read the credits. Uh, Trent Reznor, Jake Shears from the Scissor Sisters, um, uh, one of their existing drummer who had been in the band for like 10 years prior left and they ended up replacing him with someone else and Dave Grohl drummed on a lot of the songs on this record. Um, Dave Grohl is an awesome drummer of course and uh, it, it creates a very interesting cauldron melting pot of sinister pop laden um, explosiveness in its way and I, I'm, I'm definitely uh, enjoying it more with each listen. Uh, really loving the artwork as well, to start with the front cover here, the done by the artist Boneface. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a nice one on the, uh, on the old uh, birth certificate there. And um, as, uh, I don't know exactly what the purpose of this was, probably just a bone, kind of a, no pun intended for what I just said, uh, a bone to the indie record shops. This is actually on the exclusive a uh, blue cover that only went out to independent retailers, otherwise it is ordinarily in red, which I thought was very interesting and a cool little uh, bonus. And inside, you have this nice little gatefold. I don't know why the artistry of some of this, like the desert textures and things, um, I'm almost reminded, and I don't know why it reminds me of this because I don't listen to, the, to, them, to these guys at all, but it almost reminds me of uh, something about, what was it, Green Day's album, 21st Century Breakdown. I, not, not to, 
uh, not to throw those undue comparisons <laughs> their way, because I'm not really a big Green Day guy, and I would, you know, I really like Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, there's just something about that that sticks out in my mind. Maybe I'm, I'm way off base. I don't know. Um, and here's the titles, things on the back. Really like the artwork a lot. That continues on the inside. Here we have, uh, this is a dual LP set. I think it's something about this as well that reminds me of it, but I don't know. I like the sleeves a lot. Very, uh, like, post-apocalyptic looking. Uh, although my favorite is definitely uh, what's on the front here. And then on the second side, um, we have this, again, with, like, clockwork. And um, I believe, as I lose that, um, I, if you go by what they said on the Matador website in terms of the, the quality of pressing for this record, I want to say that it's not quite 180 gram. I want to say it was like just below something unusual like that. So it's not pure 180 gram. You can kind of feel it in the weight of it. The weight is a little... It's a little flim flimsy, like it's not a real thick cut of it. Uh, still plays really well, really elegantly. Um, like the softer stuff, like Vampire again, to mention that really, um, when you you turn those speakers right up, it it lays out really well in the sound and the mix. Um, I actually have a new record uh, that I talked about in a recent video that I did last week, uh, Jason Isbell's Southeastern, and it's that thick cut but something is off about the cut where it seems kind of like it was hazy like sort of hazy throughout which is, is sort of a a bummer but the reason I mention it is because like even when you get a really good one like it doesn't always matter in terms of sound it can still lay out really well it can st even if it doesn't seem like it's like top of the line audiophile you know all this all this nonsense um, it sounds great and like the the bass tones and the guitars just they they just they thump you right in the chest and that's exactly what you want with a record like that um really again really loving this uh when i went out exclusively uh to my to my local record shop looking just to see if they had this really had my fingers crossed that they were going to as it turns out they did and i was really uh really happy about it not only was I able to get the exclusive blue cover they also pass this along to me, which I think I have a spot for it, but it's a little tough because uh, I'm sort of running out of room with all the posters and things up here, but I really like that poster and that it's not just sort of your standard little thing, it's this big long uh, thing, and I assume it's probably an exclusive for the shops as well, so I was glad, even though I was really late in the game, to be able to... Uh, to pick up a copy of that, to get a cool free poster of that with the cool artwork that I really like. And uh, I would definitely, hopefully, like to review this soon. I'm not making any promises on anything, um, since I've been a little uneven lately, um, which I'm not apologizing for. It's just one of those, one of those sort of things that just happens. And uh, also you get a little lottery scratch off for the... Uh, uh, the, the album download code, which is a little uh, different from usual, but th that works as well. And uh, it's, it's, it's definitely one that, A, I could see myself maybe talking more about in another video, and maybe when all is said and done, I could kind of see it being somewhere on the end of the year lists. I, I always like to sort of favor things in different genres and uh, end up putting you know, a little smorgasbord of things together at the end of the year, and I could see that definitely kind of fitting in the whole uh, rock category, especially for the 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 softness and the haziness in different spots, so the, the way that it sort of changes up with each song, and uh, I think you'll definitely be seeing more of it. But this is, this is just about it for my little unboxing of Queens of the Stone Age with their new album, Like Clockwork. Um, I would definitely suggest going out and uh, picking this one up. I'm not sure I'm, how fans feel about it, but I'm definitely enjoying it a lot myself. I hope you enjoyed my coverage of it here today. And as always, keep on tuning in and subscribing and all of that above good stuff. But until next time, guys, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon.